In the late 1970s, Bill Bauer was a top executive in the aviation industry. But his son Joe had no intention of following in his father's footsteps. Never really dreamed of being a, an engineer or uh, anything to do with, when I was young with aircraft, you know. As far as I was concerned, I was going to be some kind of a professional athlete. But <laughs> The football dreams faded and engineering became his first love. A decade and a half later, he was working on the fledgling F-22 program. We've all worked together, the likes of Jim Sprouse, Jeff Babillon, Brent Vigier, all these senior leadership guys. We've all grown up with this airplane. In those early days, the world's most advanced fighter was merely a concept, a collection of computer designs and prototypes. It was Joe's job, and the job of thousands of others, to turn that concept into reality. Back when it, before even the prototypes were built in Burbank, California, uh, I was working the, the demonstration validation portion of it. And so I've seen all phases of the airplane. I've lived with it for 24, 25 years. My dad always says it's, you have certain programs that you work on and some that you live on. This one was, was one that we'll all consider to have lived with. It's what a lot of people who worked on the F-22 say, that at some point along the way, it stopped being just another program. It's like you work together with the same group of people over and over every day, and uh, you get to know them, and you get to know that, that they're part of a team, they're part of your team. We became like a family. And Sid Parker, who has walked every single F-22 out of Building B-1, says he feels like each and every plane is his baby. You're like attached to each one of them, you know, you think, you know, you see one fly over, you know, I get goosebumps now just, just watching one take off. It's like your kids are graduating from school and they're leaving home for the first time. It's, it's like the, this F-22 is going out into the world and you're proud to see it. And when you see it fly by, when you see it on TV in the news broadcast, you know, you'll always have pride in your heart for, for what you've accomplished. What this aircraft accomplishes over the next decades will depend in part on people like Chris Pelletier, who works in sustainment. As amazing as this jet is now, he knows as technology and weapons improve over the years, so will the F-22. We have all kinds of modernization, configuration efforts that are going on for the depots and, and we try to optimize as much of that as we can at the field team units to reduce the cost for the warfighter and the customer. We basically have the beginning of an airplane here. It's a great model, you know, it's got the basic pieces there, it has a tremendous amount of capability, but the airplane has been built and designed so that you can add a lot more capability to it. Adding to that capability will take the hard work of hundreds of Lockheed Martin employees, some whose job will be to keep all those upgrades effectively invisible. Anything that's on the OML of the aircraft affects uh, the stealth of the aircraft and we have to be able to integrate that in and make it work and maintain the aircraft signature. To keep the F-22 on the cutting edge of invisible, Krauss and the rest of his team will have to keep up with stealth technologies and coatings, then incorporate them into the fleet. I guess I have a unique thing that I can walk out the airplane and lay my hand on and say, I did this. And there's not a whole lot of people that can do that. But even for those on the business side of sustainment, the job is special because, after all, it's the F-22. I was walking in here and one of the uh, aircraft were taken out for a manufacturing flight test. And I still, to this day, you hear those engines rumble, you, you turn, you stop, you look, and you grin when you see the Raptor fly. It's just way, it is way cool. I always said I always got the second best job on the Raptor program. The best, he says, is the job of flying it. You know, ever since I was a little kid, that's, that's something I've always wanted to do is fly the airplane. So, flying the greatest airplane in the world. I mean, there is no match to the F-22. For me, the, one of the things that stands out the most is its ability at high altitude. Above 40,000 feet, it loves it up there. And all the other airplanes are struggling and it, I mean, it just cruises. Everybody who's worked the program has got to know that 
they built the best airplane in the world and you know take pride in what you've done. The production end of the line has come. Their aircraft life is still ongoing and will continue to ongoing. And it fulfills a role that no other aircraft does. And that's the reason it's so important. It feels pretty good to know that uh, what I did here uh, is gonna go on, you know, hopefully long after I'm gone, it'll still be uh, protecting my kids and grandkids. Something I can always look back on and share with my grandkids, even my great-grands, that I was a part of a team of the most powerful aircraft ever built. It was worth it. I would do another 10 years if I could. <laughs> I'm gonna miss it greatly. I've, I've really put a lot of uh, work and sweat and blood into this airplane, and I, I really do love to see it fly. But that's the great thing about this aircraft. It will continue to fly for decades. The second chapter of this amazing machine has only just begun. So, you know, as, as the folks move on, that if, you know, again, shed that blood, sweat, and tear, they need to, they need to think of the, the positive of, of the legacy that they were part of. And, and, and it truly is a, an absolutely amazing machine. You know, the F-22, you know, won't be rivaled for years to come. And while those who worked on the F-22 gave a lot, they also got something in return. The experience and knowledge gained from working on a world-class platform. And I encourage each individual who's moving on to another assignment to take the best of what you learned and what you gave and use that as a catalyst for wherever you're going. They, rather than be melancholy, celebrate what was accomplished and use that as a springboard to do even greater things in the future. I mean, this goes back to October 6, 1994, the first day that we cut chips uh, on, a, on a part for the F-22. In his home office, Joe Bauer has a piece of the first F-22 on his desk. On the wall, there's a picture of his father. He was my inspiration, my hero, uh, especially when it came to uh, not only uh, building airplanes, but how to live your life. Last year, Bill Bauer died at the age of 83. But he got to see his son, who once had no intention of following him into the airplane business, take part in the creation of the most amazing aircraft of all time. He was like, you realize you're part of something very special. He was very proud of, like I said, not only me, um, but uh, the Lockheed for what we built and, and also always a proud American, so. He was, uh, he was awestruck with the way, you know, with what that airplane could do. 